because that's what we have here. Uh, do you have any that we can actually show people how to check the cope? So what I do is I do have a lot of uh, 2014s, 2016 Freightliners. We can pop in one. I can show you how to pull up a code. What I'll do is I'll unplug a coolant sensor just for the heck of it so you can see how it comes up. And it'll show you how on the dash. Uh, Close attention to our engine. Now I'm gonna hit the button again to find out what it is. Once you do that, it gives you, now it doesn't do it all the time, but majority of the time I'll give you a brief description of what's going on. So this one apparently has a cool uh, cooling fan system problem detected. You know, service engine soon. So don't freak out when you see that. Because I can definitely drive this truck. There's no issues. But if you have that trusted uh, mechanic, he'll tell you what the code is. Uh, tell you what it's all entailed. But if you press that arrow button one more time, and there's your code. Diagnostic code. It's going to give you an SPN number. Then an FMI number. So this code is what you want to give to your mechanic. And then he can at least try to pull up the troubleshooting steps or have a good idea of what's going on with your truck. No. What's going on to the truckers? We're back again, hanging out with my guy, Steve at LRM. You know, you guys request for this man a lot because we're just here just to give you information. So the biggest thing that I think and everyone else thinks is when they go to a dealership, they get screwed real quick. And usually when you have an issue, you don't know what it is. And so you go there and they pretty much take advantage of you and let you get bent over, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say all dealerships because you got to remember, I came from a dealership, small yeah. shops. So it, it, everybody's managed by the management that we work under, right? Exactly. So you're only as good as your management team. But there's quotas over there. Oh, for sure. They're no. making money for a reason. They're, they're uh, uh, giving you advice to change and swap certain things, right? They follow procedures. Right. They're 100 procedure followers. So that's why I always say try to find a mechanic that you may know that's not a dealership. Right. Just because... When you go outside the dealership, they're not following a script. Right. So something that you see over and over and over and over again as a mechanic, that one guy can go straight to and test that specific issue where the dealership, you, it's not the way it is. You have a fault code or there's an issue, they got to follow the procedural way and documentation, everything. Right. And that's just the way the industry is when it comes to the... The dealership world. Dealership world, right. Yeah. And not even, even the bigger ones, they just follow procedures because, believe it or not, um, people do miss some of the simple stuff like checking a fuse, check the batteries, make sure you have proper power. And dealerships are just covering all that. But again, when all that's happening, that's where they're racking up all that time, which you're paying for. Man, so, you know, Steve is actually my personal mechanic on my semi trucks. So it's just. When you get a hold of me? Yeah, when I can get a hold of you. Busy, so, yeah. uh, you know, we got him during lunch, so we won't take up too much of your time right now. So, usually when I'm calling you, the first thing you ask me is, what the hell does the code say? Right? And a lot of people don't know how to run that. I know right now um, you guys have a lot of Freightliners that you guys work on, correct? Yes. And so you guys are in luck. Um, if they do not know what their code is, right, um, how do they find that? And does that work for all types of semi-trucks? Or this is especially with Freightliner. So Freightliner is definitely, they made it easy where you can read the codes off the dash, off the ICU. Um, not all. Uh, make some models and uh, the trucking will allow you to see those codes mm -hmm. some of them will it all depends on how it's all set up but freight liners from my experience so far has all been you can pull everything off the dash you can one or two things one you can do the google situation and try to decipher what codes you have you know and sometimes they'll line out especially with the description and what it says on the dash and it matches up and you just got to read because there's so many issues with maybe one code one guy found it being this way so like most things, you're going to be confused as hell Google searching this shit. <laughs> well, especially when you're a new owner operator or not knowing much about your truck. Yes, right. it can be quite confusing. But now this is where you build relationships with mechanics in your hometown that can listen to you and say, hey, this is the problem I have. You can give them a call and say, hey, this is the code I have. Is there anything I can do on my end to try to get trucking until I see you? Because sometimes you can actually do a few things on your end to save you a little bit of money at least to finish the load and then um I like your ringtone it's my girl yeah she's calling but um you know there could be a few things that you can do on your end to try to finish your load until you get to the shop or sometimes you can actually fix the problem yourself depending on what the code is but if you have a mechanic that can help you somewhat decipher in aspects of you know this could be a common occurrency check this out check this out and yeah. resolve the problem or he may say you need to come and see me so you definitely need to find a mechanic that you can rely and trust on. I love that. I love that. So if you're in a Freightliner, because that's what we have here, 
Uh, do you have any that we can actually show people how to check the cope? So what I do is I do have a lot of uh, 2014s, 2016 Freightliners. We can pop in one. I can show you how to pull up a code. What I'll do is I'll unplug a coolant sensor just for the heck of it so you can see how it comes up. And it'll show you how on the dash. Uh, usually a description and a code. Gotcha. And it's a few simple steps and you can do this on your own. Awesome. Let's go look for one with the code. What we got going on? So we have a 2015 uh, Freightliner Cascadia. It's a... Uh, it's a day cab. This one actually has a check engine light on. Oh, does it? It does. Okay. So we're gonna hop up in the cab and let's take a look at the code. I'm gonna show you how yeah. to pull it off the dash. Awesome. Now this, like I said, this works for freight liners. When you have other trucks like a Kenworth or a Peterbilt, and the, sometimes you can't pull those off the dash, I would recommend that you find a code reader and it, that can read it as close as you can to. I wanna say Nexic is a pretty good brand. You know, there's a whole bunch out there, but read through them and see, get the ones that are close to OEM reading. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's, so, let's, let's go. So, and you don't have to buy one that's fancy. You don't have to get the five, six thousand dollar one. You know, uh, there's some that I know that you can spend like a hundred and like twenty bucks, right. and it's small. And all you can do is read and clear codes, and that's it. You know, how many people do you think get screwed every year from dealerships not knowing how to read codes and knowing what they're walking into? You think they spend thousands of dollars that they shouldn't even have to spend at times? Well, right off the bat, when you go to a dealership, like I said, they'll go in there, you're gonna spend already off the bat $600 just to get the truck looked at. So let's save yourself a little bit of money off the gate. Yeah, and then try to, like I said, the biggest thing is trying to find a mechanic that you can trust. Gotcha. That's the biggest thing. Always, man. Yep. Well, I'm glad you're my mechanic, Steve. So what am I doing? Should well, I you, jump on the other side? Get on the other side. And okay. All right, guys, so I have, like I said here, a Freightliner Cascadia 2015. What you want to do is make sure that the truck is in the park position, right? Turn on the truck, let the gauges sweep like they normally would, and then you'll notice that this light will stay on. So what I want to do is, um, let me back this up just about right here. So when you have, see right here in the center, if you want to zoom in, and you want I will to use, zoom in after. So right here, um, you're gonna look where it changes and you're gonna use the plus and minus sign on the steering wheel which is right here on the right hand side so you want to hit plus until you get to the screen it says park menu press the down the right arrow to enter in the park menu so this once you get to that screen then you're gonna go towards the center of the dash and you're gonna see that same arrow that goes down into the right you're gonna push that and then the screen will change again you're gonna use your plus minus sign and you're gonna stroll down where it says diagnostics once you go there, again, you're gonna hit the arrow button again. And you can see already, it says it has two active codes. When you see the arrow, you're gonna hit it again. Now it's gonna give you two locations. You have one for engine two, you have one fault code, and you have one for HVAC. So HVAC's not gonna cause an issue with your truck's overall performance. Anytime it says engine or after treatment, those are the ones that are gonna cause an issue with your truck. So our, we're gonna pay close attention to our engine. And I'm gonna hit the button again to find out what it is. Once you do that, it gives you, now it doesn't do it all the time, but majority of the time, I'll give you a brief description of what's going on. So this one apparently has a cool uh, cooling fan system problem detected, you know, service engine soon. So don't freak out when you see that, because I can definitely drive this truck, there's no issues, but if you have that trusted uh, mechanic, He'll tell you what the code is, uh, tell you what it's all entailed. But if you press that arrow button one more time, and there's your code, diagnostic code. It's gonna give you an SPN number, then an FMI number. So this code is what you wanna give to your mechanic, and then he can at least try to pull up the troubleshooting steps or have a good idea of what's going on with your truck. Gotcha, gotcha. And it was just that simple. And, and pause we, the we video, just, people, if you need to redo. So it's a little bit of playing Tron here. It's just click, 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 arrow, click, click, click. <laughs> That's it. Now I took my time, but you can figure this out. You can pull the code within seconds once you get used to it. And spend some time. Get the uh, owner's manual. Get a better idea how your truck operates. Well, hey, we're here with Steve, the foreman at LRM. Thanks for saving people potentially thousands of dollars. Let me give you guys another good hint if this will help as well. When you Let's guys, turn off the beep if we can. When you guys go to a shop or dealer, and they give you an outrageous bill, like eight, nine thousand dollars. Just don't take it for face value. 
ask, maybe go see another mechanic, tell them the situation, because a good one is like where high pressure pumps start making a pinging noise. And this is, I'm just throwing this one out here, but I've seen it several times. And the shop wants to replace all injectors. They're gonna pull the fuel tanks. They're gonna clean all this, but they didn't, they're not gonna check everything. You know, have someone open it up. How far did that metal really travel? Is it in the injectors where you see it in the screen? Is it in the fuel tanks where they inspect it? Because if it's only in the fuel system where you can flush out a few lines or replace a high pressure pump, maybe you went from 8,000 to probably only two to 3,000. So when anytime you get a big bill, this is probably the best time for a second opinion. Especially when you come from a dealership, see if you can find another shop nearby and tell them the same situation, what's going on. Hey, I hear a pinging noise. They said I need a high pressure fuel pump. What is it all gonna entail? You know, they'll say they need to crack open a line to inspect to see how far the metal went. And so just remember anything that's high, don't take it fully for face value. Just try to get a second opinion and it may save you money that way as well. Gotcha, gotcha, no, thank you.